Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, today we are here to discuss an area which is very common issue in our day to day life and that is regarding pain and management of pain and what are the different medicines that we use for treating pain. Pain is a condition which nobody here, none of you can say neither I can that we have never felt pain in our life. So, pain is a constant accompaniment in our life. In fact, when we are born while our, our mothers gave birth to us, mother also felt pain. When we are born for the first time probably the first cry in the world that was also there is some amount of uncomfortableness or pain that we all feel. Pain is a situation it is very difficult although pain is such a common thing, but it is very difficult to really define what is pain. We will today discuss about the pain medications and we also have commonly uh, very familiar with the term that is called analgesic. In order to refer to the medicines or the drugs that are used to relieve pain. We will try to understand today what are the different kinds of medicines that are used for relieving pain. Of course, besides medicine there are also other strategies, treatment strategies of managing pain, but we will be limiting our discussion in uh, the discussing about the medicines that are used for relieving pain or treating pain. Now, the first before we get into the subject of discussing medicines for treating pain, let us try to understand first what is pain and uh, how is it that we feel pain. Now, when you talk of pain medicines or pain relieving medicines, in fact this group of medicines remains the highest selling of all drugs or highest consumed of all drugs. So, naturally then uh, it, is, it is of great interest to the industry that gets the medicines in the market that they also have a great interest in these kind of medicines. Now, pain is as we have already stated that it is a very universal kind of uh, experience. It is called it is the most ubiquitous kind of uh, symptom. It is very subjective. So, we, we can we can assess or we can measure blood pressure, we can measure temperature, we have different instruments for measurement of these, but so far as measurement of pain we do not really have any instrument for measuring pain. So, it is a subjective feeling, it not only depends on the degree of or the severity of pain, but also the person who is feeling the pain depends on him how he is actually reacting to the pain that he experiences. Same amount of pain might not motivate somebody for seeking treatment. So, tolerance, tolerance or tolerability of pain is also a big issue which is very much host specific or the person specific. It is complex in nature and we know that it could also be acute or chronic. We say chronic pain or acute pain. What do we mean by acute pain or chronic pain? It is generally said that if a pain continues to bother us for more than 6 weeks, then we call it has reached a state of chronicity or it is called a chronic pain. In other words, a relatively longer term pain which is more than 6 weeks in duration continuously bothering us, then we call it chronic pain. Now, in reference to pain there are some other terms also which comes to our mind that is algesia like nociception, what do they mean? 
when you talk of nociception we actually possibly are referring to a kind of uh, local damage or local tissue damage and then it is rather a process that of awareness of this tissue damage in terms of being conscious that there is a injury in some part of our body and so the the injury is is uh, appreciated by our system awake system and this process of making ourselves aware or awake about this uh, system or injury that is what is called nociception many people they would try to uh, uh, interchangeably use the term nociception with pain, but they are not really equivalent. Nociception is the process of transmitting the impulses of uh, the stimuli that would cause pain that is nociception and algesia is rather you can say more or less you can say synonymously with pain and that is the reason why when you talk of analgesics a drug that will inhibit or antagonize pain they are called analgesics. But then uh, when, we, when, when we are put to sleep or when we are say put to when we are anesthetized our ability to really perceive pain is reduced to a great extent. So, when you talk of analgesics an analgesic is a drug which will help us in relieving pain, but without without affecting or without compromising our consciousness. The moment our consciousness is, is affected or suppressed then we call it an anesthetic agent. Truly speaking the anesthetic agents or anesthesia also will cause relief in pain or reducing pain, but anesthesia will also cause loss of consciousness. Now we come across a term called analgesic anti-inflammatory. In fact, they are used uttered simultaneously analgesic anti-inflammatory. So, in fact, <coughs> we might have also come across terms like non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, in short, it is called NSAIDs, N S A I D S, that is non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. <coughs> this is a group, group of drugs, and they otherwise share more or less common properties because the mechanism of their action, uh, anti inflammatory action, is broadly speaking similar, same. So, they are grouped as, as a class non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs and in fact, the, the pathological mechanisms or pathophysiological mechanisms for inflammation and pain they are, they are also to a great extent similar in reference to the mediators, chemical mediators that are responsible for this inflammation to happen or the pain to happen or pain to be facilitated they are again the same kind of mediators we will be discussing about them pro inflammatory mediators, pro pain mediators, pro asthma mediators there is a similarity among them. So, <coughs> these mediators one of the important mediator is prostaglandins or as a group prostaglandins. Now, this prostaglandin synthesis is inhibited by all these drugs that are contained in the group of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. So, prostaglandin synthesis inhibitors and prostaglandins are synthesized by the enzyme non specifically they are called cyclooxygenase enzyme which acts upon arachidonic acid and so cyclooxygenase enzyme inhibitors they are actually non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. And so simultaneously it will not only cause lowering of inflammation it will also cause relief of pain. So, this is one group of drugs that are used for treating or relieving pain. On the other hand there is another group they are called narcotic analgesics or they may be also called opioid analgesics. Now, the term narcosis means sleep or sedation. So, an analgesics that will produce analgesia, but simultaneously we would cause sleep or would cause sedation. So, this group of analgesics are called narcotic analgesics, but better term is opioid analgesics because all these narcotic analgesics they act via stimulating the receptors special kind of receptors and they are called opioid receptors we will discuss about this. 
So, they are called narcotic analgesics. So, broadly speaking when you talk of analgesics there are two broad groups of analgesics one non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs which are also known as analgesic and anti inflammatory drugs. In fact, all they also have most of them also have uh, some anti pyretic activity that means, they will also cause lowering of body temperature that means, they are also used in fever for relieving fever. On the other hand there is another group that is opioid analgesics they are because they cause sedation they are called narcotic analgesics. Now, as we have stated pain could be acute and chronic acute pain particularly in reference to when there is a tissue injury and we feel pain because of the injury there are some mediators they are they are active there because there will be a local inflammation. So, the same mediators will also be responsible for transmitting pain. We will also discuss the mechanisms and the pathways involved in pain the different neurotransmitters and neuromodulators which are which are responsible in uh, facilitating or inhibiting pain transmission. There are terms like adjuvant analgesics which are not truly analgesics by definition, but they help in relieving pain particularly they are effective in chronic pain not in acute pain we will also discuss about them. And there are some non analgesics also which are used in the treatment of pain. If you think of chest pain which is actually of cardiac origin coronary insufficiency. So, there also <coughs> will be we use medicines which are not truly analgesics we use nitrates organic nitrates and for and there is uh, symptom is relieved the chest pain is relieved. So, here is a clear example then that non analgesic being used for treatment of pain. If you think of abdominal colic, so there we use most many a times the anti muscarinic agents or anticholinergic drugs which are used and which will cause the relaxation of the smooth muscles of the intestine and thereby the pain because the intestinal colic is a because of the spasm of the smooth muscle of the intestine. So, if you relax them, so there will be relief of pain. So, that way <coughs> the, the uh, anti muscarinic agents they can be used for treating abdominal pain or abdominal colic, but they are by no means can be called a true analgesic, but because they are used for the management of certain kind of pain we can definitely talk about them because they are used in the treatment of pain. So, having said this let us now go to discuss or uh, about the pain mechanisms. When you talk of pain mechanism we have to always think of discussing about the different types of fibers pain fibers they, they are called and how the signals pain signals are transmitted. Broadly speaking there are two types of pain fibers one is A delta fiber and the other is C fibers basically they are peripheral nerves uh, which are sprayed in the peripheral tissues skin and uh, subcutaneous tissues and uh, also in the muscles uh, might be in the bones and viscera also. And uh, these tissues when they are damaged so these A delta fiber or the C fibers they are activated. A delta fibers are actually meant for transmitting the pain signals uh, which are which can get transmitted at a faster pace which are sharp pain and well localized pain signals from the sharp and well localized pain sites these A delta fibers are activated and they will be transmitting these signals. On the other hand from the viscera from uh, the dull kind of pain or kind of burning pain okay, or where it is poorly localized the signals from these sources of pain mostly it is in the viscera in the deeper tissues in bone. So, these, these pain signals will be carried via a different kind of fiber these are C fibers. The A delta fibers they are as we have stated they are in the skin and the muscle and they are myelinated and they respond to mechanical stimuli and they produce intermittent pain. While 
the C fibers they are in the muscles or in the bone. When you talk of bone they are actually present in the periosteum, they are also present in the viscera and they are unmyelinated fibers. They conduct the thermal, the chemical and the stronger kind of mechanical stimuli and they produce persistent pain. So, for persistent pain C fibers are implicated for transmission from the deeper structures and for, for the superficial structure skin and muscle the myelinated A delta fibers are responsible for transmitting this type of pain. Now, let us talk about the different neurotransmitters and neuromodulators that may be implicated that may be responsible for the transmission of pain. Neurotransmitters the name as the name suggests you know that the basically these are chemical substances that are responsible for transmitting neural impulse wherever there is the continuity of the nerve is, is compromised. Okay. So, when a one nerve ends another nerve starts at that junction because the physical continuity is breached. So, you need su a substance chemical substance to actually ferry the impulse from one end to the other and that is the precise job that is done by the neurotransmitters. These are basically chemicals that exert either inhibitory or excitatory activity at the post synaptic nerve cell membrane. This gap in the continuity is called a synapse. Okay. So, this post synaptic nerve cell membrane there the receptors are there and the neurotransmitters will carry the impulse and by activation with the receptor they will transmit this impulse from the proximal end to the distal end and that is how the impulse will continue to get transmitted. Or else if the post synaptic, post -synaptic cell is an effector cell then the effector cell activity will be stimulated. The chemical substances which are known as neurotransmitters are acetylcholine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, 5 hydroxytryptamine, etcetera. These are the common uh, neurotransmitter that we know of besides of course, there are neurotransmitters like uh, gamma amino butyric acid, glutamate, etcetera, they are also there. Now, in reference to pain uh, science or pain medicine, the neurotrans these are the neurotransmitters that act either to excite or to inhibit the neurotransmitters act either to excite or to inhibit the transmission of the pain impulses. There are also other kind of chemicals that unlike the neurotransmitters <coughs> they are uh, actually influence the action of the neurotransmitters or action of the effectivity in the neuro effector uh, uh, interactions and they are the endogenous opioids they are called neuromodulators, they are not really neurotransmitters, they are called neuromodulators. They are endogenous opioids like alpha en endorphins, beta endorphins, enkephalins. So, these are rather called neuromodulators. So, they influence the action of neurotransmitters or they may also influence the binding of the neurotransmitters with the neuro effector organ. So, these these are the other factors that can influence the uh, pain transmission. We have to also always mention about opioid receptors in the same breath. We just mentioned about endogenous opioids like uh, the endorphins and the enkephalins. So, these are the neuromodulators, but in order to produce their action, their action is actually receptor mediated and these receptors are called opioid receptors. Why opioid? Because they produce effects that resemble that that are that could be produced by those uh, that can be developed by application of opium. So, that is why opioid because uh, opium we know it is a natural substance and from there the term has come and the receptor has been named as opioid receptor resembling the activity of opium. Now, opioid receptors are the binding sites for endogenous opioids, but also the same binding sites are also meant for uh, are, are, the, are the site where the opioid analgesics they also bind. And both the endogenous opioids that is endorphins and enkephalins and the externally applied opioid analgesics they will produce they will tend to relieve pain by binding with these receptors. 
Now, the different types of opioid receptors are mu receptor, kappa receptor, delta, epsilon and sigma receptors out of which this mu and kappa are most important uh, in the central nervous system and at the spinal level they are present. Mu receptor is are receptors are located in the central nervous system like in brain stream, in limbic system, the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and the endorphins, encephalins and morphine sulphate and other opiates and opioid drugs are the uh, agonists to mu receptor. Now, here if you if you carefully note that two terms I have used one is opiate and the other is opioid. There is a subtle difference between these two terms. When you talk of opiate you actually mean anything that is derived from opium that is opiate. So, that is a opioid, but that is of natural origin that is opiates are naturally occurring opioids. What is an opioid? Opioid is any substance that act via stimulating opioid receptor. So, opioids are all opiates are opioids, but not, not necessarily all opioids are opiates. Opiates are naturally occurring while opioids could be natural or it could be also synthetic. So, uh, all these actually are agonists to mu receptors. Now, let us talk about the specific mediators for pain. Now, when the tissues are damaged, the cells are damaged at the periphery or at the deeper structure, there is a local inflammation. We all know the different cardinal signs of inflammation. One of that cardinal sign is pain, uh, the, the calor, rubor, dolor, tumor and functio lesa, these are the five cardinal signs. Out of these dolor means pain. So, whenever there is inflammation there will be pain simultaneously because it is the same mediators that cause inflammation that will also cause pain. Now, as a result of inflammation there are release of these, these chemical mediators the histamine, bradykinin and prostaglandins in the area surrounding the A delta fiber and C fibers and these mediators they act synergistically to augment the transmission of nociceptive impulse. Nociceptive impulse means an impulse that can produce or that carries the pain impulses or the pain stimuli. Now, this cartoon shows uh, the pathway or rather at the peripheral level uh, how it is happening. Here you see this is the noxious stimuli and because of this there will be a local inflammation and this inflammation there will be tissue damage and inflammation and so these are the uh, primary afferent nociceptor which is actually either A delta fiber or the C fiber and there will be transduction. So, the stimuli will be will be converted into nerve impulse and that impulse that message will be carried this is an afferent fiber will be carried via this afferent primary afferent nociceptor through this A delta or C depending on whether it is peripheral or it is a deeper structure whether it is only skin and superficial muscle or it is deep muscle or periosteum or the viscera based on that the C, fact, C uh, fibers will be uh, implicated. Whatever it could be it all these fibers they will enter into the spinal cord through the dorsal horn okay, from the dorsal horn. So, this is how this is at this level in the on the afferent path there will be a receptor and that is opioid receptor. Okay and then it, it goes to the it enters the spinal cord through the back door that is the dorsal horn and there again at this level there is a modulation and these are the inhibitory kind of neurotransmitters okay, or neuromodulators serotonin or that is 5 hydroxytryptamine norepinephrine then gamma aminobutyric acid. So, these are the neurotransmitters besides opioids or endogenous opioids that is the the endorphins and the encephalins. So, they all will be tending to inhibit this impulse. So, there is as if there is an endogenous analgesic system is there. So, if the if the impulses are not allowed to go up basically it is supposed to go up to the brain where we will be feeling pain perceived pain. So, if it is if it is uh, diffused here at this level. 
so it will not go, so we will not feel pain. But then some portion will definitely cross these fibers cross and go to the other side take uh, go to the ventral side and goes up, goes up up to the brain stem then uh, thalam, hypothalamus, thalamus and then finally to the cortex. And at this level as it is going up that is what is called a spinothalamic tract at this level these are the different kind of uh, again neuro, neuromodulators which will actually influence this the excitatory kind of neuromodulators like substance P, substance K, glutamate which is basically uh, again a, ne a neurotransmitter, aspartate, calcium, uh, calcitonin gene related peptides etcetera, vasoactive intestinal peptides they all will try to stimulate this. Okay. So, there will be an excitation okay, this will stimulate the passage of this impulse to the central nervous system. So, we need to understand this in order to understand the how at what level uh, we can cut this or we can prevent the impulse to go, go up and thereby. So, one part is about the tissue damage or you can say that uh, the cause of pain, but then uh, it is not enough to for the tissue damage and the pain to happen at the peripheral level. How we are feeling pain and reacting to pain that is all that is important. So, and for that this intact pathway is important. Now, there is a theory called gate control theory that is physiologically there is a there is an attempt by our system to also try to try to control the, the passage as if it is a gatekeeper. Okay. Physical pain results following the activation of pain receptor neurons. Uh, because of the tissue damage and its its uh, perception modulated by multineuron interactions. Now, we have spoken about A delta fibers which are the fast channels and the C fibers which are the slow channels that transmit pain impulses from the periphery, but that is intercepted in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord the substantia gelatinosa, gelatinosa where they that is the impulses can be inhibited that is called what is gate closer. So, at the level of the uh, at the level of the uh, substantia gelatinosa in the dorsal horn there is one possibility that gate will be closed as we have just seen at this level here there is a modulation this is what is called gate closer. So, that explains the, the uh, gate theory gate control theory that at this level there is a block or there is a tendency to, to suppress pain. And uh, it could also be facilitated uh, at this level or rather here we see this is at this level as it is going up there is a uh, this, this is being facilitated excitatory. So, the gate can be closed and gate can be opened this is kind of that is what is called gate control theory the, the influence of the modulators neuromodulators and neurotransmitters they can well explain the gate control theory. So, that is what is happening in uh, physiologically and it is said similar kind of gating mechanism also exist in the descending fibers that is thalamus to cortex after it reaches thalamus it goes to the cortex and it is the cortical area where the brain regulates the uh, this is these are the areas the thalamus, hypothalamus and the cortex where our brain actually regulate the thoughts and emotions and it is our thoughts and emotions and past experience which actually would be regulating how we would be reacting to pain or how we would be feeling pain. So, that also is a kind of control mechanism which is there in the higher center at the. So, we have the control mechanism at the first gate when we are receiving the pain impulse at the dorsal horn. Then again as the uh, spinothalamic tract is going up towards the uh, brain at that level by the different neurotransmitters and neuromodulators that is going to excite uh, the pain, uh, facilitate the pain transmission uh, as if the gate has been opened and more and more impulses can go up. And then at the brain level at the thalamus and the cortical level where our thoughts and emotions are regulated at that level also there is a possibility of uh, suppressing or uh, either suppressing or facilitating the pain perception. So, this is what is the gate control mechanism. We need to then understand about the sources of pain, the tissue nociceptive 
factor that is the free nerve ending that receive painful stimuli. This actually happens in case of acute pain, but in case of chronic pain a different mechanism actually acts and that is the neuropathic pain that occurs because of the damaged nerve. If the damage uh, is also uh, extending at the nerve level and the nerve is also damaged then it becomes very difficult and uh, in that case it leaves a more uh, kind of permanent imprint and it refuses to get easily relieved or easily cured. So, it is a relatively longer lasting and it, it goes beyond that 6 weeks and so we call it chronic pain. So, neuropathic pain is actually a type of chronic pain. And then of course, we have another kind of mixed kind of pain where there is acute and the uh, chronic pain they are mixed and that is a model of cancer pain. Uh, in cancer different types of cancer also uh, terminally ill patients, terminal cancer there is also severe pain or uh, patients with experience and there this kind of pain is also uh, is in fact an example of where both the uh, acute and the chronic model of pain that can that has been exemplified in cancer pain. So, cancer pain is an example where both the acute and the chronic pain have been accommodated and both the A delta fiber and the C fibers are found to be responsible for transmission of the impulses. There are also types of uh, peculiar type of pain which is called phantom limb pain. So, when the limb is no longer there amputation has taken place, but even then the patient con continues to feel the pain and that is because of something uh, the, the something has gone weird at the level of the higher center where the emotions and the thoughts they are involved. So, it is it is otherwise have made some kind of imprint so that the patient still continue to feel pain although the source of pain is no longer there that is what is called phantom pain or phantom limb pain. We will continue with this and now we will be we are possibly ready to discuss about the different drugs that are used for the treatment of different clinical pain conditions. We will be discussing the two broad groups of analgesics the NSAID analgesics and the other is opioid analgesics besides we will also talk about non analgesics drugs that are used in the treatment of uh, pain, different clinical pain conditions that possibly we will be discussing in the next session. Thank you very much.